Over the years, few performers have had the type of career longevity as Tina Turner. Not only is this 81 year old one of the most famous women in rock and roll history, but thanks to a recent documentary by HBO called Tina, her fans are finally getting an inside look at her troubling early life and eventual success before she decided to hang it all up. Look what I have done in this lifetime with this body. I'm a girl from a cotton field that pulls myself above. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Earning herself a legendary career in the music industry with over 200 million records sold worldwide, three Grammy Hall of Fame awards, a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, and an induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame means that Tina also amassed an equally impressive net worth over the years. Recent estimates peg it somewhere in the 200 50 million dollar range. Now when your bank account statement is printing out nine figures like that, you're bound to own some impressive real estate and Tina is no different. At the height of her career and popularity, she lived with her former husband Ike in an infamous discotheque inspired home in Los Angeles. But after that relationship would come to a dramatic end, Tina would eventually fall in love abroad, give up her American citizenship and move permanently to Zurich, Switzerland where she now lives in a home she's christened the Chateau Algonquin. And that isn't the only home she owns in Europe. She's also invested a whole lot of money and time in a vacation home in the French Riviera that's flashier than most royal palaces. How's it going guys and gals? It's Kara here for you with a brand new celebrity house tour. Today we're taking a look at three homes of one of the most talented singers of all time, Tina Turner. I've been a fan of Tina ever since my mom used to rock out to her tracks in the car when I was just a kid, which means from a young age I've always known that Tina is. Not only is she one of the most talented women on the face of the planet, but she has amazing taste when it comes to her homes, especially the villa she now spends most of her time in across the pond. Today I'm going to take you inside each one of them. Be sure to let me know what you thought by following me on Instagram. Alright, let's get into this video. We'll begin with arguably Tina's most infamous estate, even if it's far from her nicest, a retro disco home that she once owned during the 1970s. And if you close your eyes and run that sentence back in your head, I think you'll find that when you open them, the pictures you're about to see are going to look exactly like you were imagining. Tina and her ex-husband Ike owned this residence and lived here throughout the course of their marriage from 1956 to 1977. On the inside of this 3,000 square foot, 4 bedroom, 5 bathroom home, you'll find a whole bunch of harvest gold and velvet that almost instantly transports you back to the heyday of 70s style. Without a doubt though, the highlight is the master bedroom which features an elevated pedestal for the bed, alongside multicolored overhead lighting, an entire wall full of mirrors that's sure to catch the reflection of that gorgeous west coast sunrise. The nearby family room also has a retro mirror inspired ceiling which helps provide a pleasant contrast to the more natural stone wall and fireplace that complete the decor. Meanwhile, the kitchen boasts an avocado green dishwasher because, I mean, the 70s. And it also features a pass through window that allows access to the nearby family room. Because Tina's mother had some Indian heritage, Tina eventually became inspired by Buddhism as she grew older and installed custom handles on her front doors that were sculpted into the shape of Buddhist hand gestures. Also towards the back of the home is the pool area with a waterfall pond. Between that, all the mirrors and the avocado green, I really don't think this home could be more 70s. In fact, this home so perfectly captures the look and feel of the time when Tina was still living here that when the feature film What's Love Got to Do With It about the story of her life was made in the 90s, a lot of it was shot right here. What about the way you got this place that done, huh? All this furniture, that fish tank, this, 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 the sofas, this fountain and shit, that shit costs money, anime. I got to pay the girls and I got to pay the band. At least that used to be the case because now this one-time home to the stars has been remodeled and flipped back onto the market where its asking price is currently sitting at a cool $1.48 million. The refurbished interiors maintain the home's mid-century modern vibe while updating the details to make a 21st century family more at home, including an all-new kitchen which, yeah, probably required an upgrade the most if we're being honest. But hey, at least they kept those awesome front door handles. After Tina's relationship with Ike came to an explosive end, she would go on to marry German music executive Erwin Bach in 2013 after the couple dated for nearly three decades. I really needed love. I just needed to love a person. 
The feeling of love in a person is very important to have. That same year she was married, Tina applied for Swiss citizenship, and after passing all the mandatory tests, she became a Swiss citizen and gave up her American citizenship the fall of 2013. The couple then moved into an absolutely jaw-dropping home in Zurich, Switzerland. Back when Tina was still with Ike, she always felt she never had a space of her own, and needless to say, she's now making up for it with the home she's named the Chateau Algonquin. Here, she's in total control of her physical surroundings. While the interior of this place is under pretty strict lock and key, reports suggest that this estate looks every bit like your quintessential European palace. It has ivy snaking up the walls, gardeners manicuring plentiful shrubs, and a life-size two-legged horse sculpture that's suspended from a dome ceiling inside. I mean, there's reportedly even a room stuffed to the gills with Louis XIV inspired sofas, featured alongside a portrait of Tina rendered as an Egyptian queen. If what's been rumored is true, then the Algonquin is simply overflowing with beautiful things inside and out, like pieces of an enormous shattered amethyst crystal arranged alongside the in-ground swimming pool. The only catch? Tina doesn't own this home outright. Instead, she rents it from her landlord, who is said to live in her attic, and controls the nearby boathouse, which stands at the shore of the lake her property backs onto. Finally, let's take a look at the home located on the French Riviera. And trust me, if you thought her home in Switzerland was nice, you haven't seen anything yet. In the hills above the Riviera are a host of amazing villas, one of which sitting atop the highest of hills is Tina's vacation home. Tina will often drive herself south from her home in Switzerland to throw lavish parties and celebrations here in France. To get herself ready, she'll fling open the doors to her dressing room and devise herself an outfit from hundreds, if not thousands, of wardrobe selections. Interestingly enough, though, when it comes to both her decor and sense of style, Tina's not a huge fan of color. She told Architectural Digest, I'm not that person. I don't even wear colors. My work is noisy, but my life is quiet. I need nature and solitude. They nurture me. If that's the case, then Tina must find this home in the heart of the wilderness to be extremely nurturing indeed. Tina discovered it after renting a little pink house near the summit of where she now inhabits. When she heard that a villa was up for sale nearby, she jumped at the chance to scoop up this property, situated between two mountains and surrounded by woods that are teeming with wildlife. The villa has undergone a series of incarnations over the years, before Tina settled on its present mix of grandeur balanced by informality. She told Architectural Digest, when I see something I love, a suite of furniture, a piece of art, I never measure, I never hesitate, I just buy it. Eventually I'll find a place for it. I've always wanted and needed to transform my surroundings because decorating is my first response to loss and upheaval. Settle, collect, create a private universe. Teaming up with interior designer Steven Sills and James Huniford, Tina embarked on a visual journey to find inspiration. Visiting places like Villa Carillo, modeled after the houses of ancient Delos, and decorated with meticulously faithful reproductions of attic furnishings art, mosaic, frescoes, and fixtures. Tina's own home pays homage to this beautiful villa, and its influence can be felt in Tina's terraced amphitheater, as well as the home's stenciled plasterwork, not to mention the graceful disposition of the Greek and Roman pottery and sculptures that are on display. Even the column pool and terraces that are sheltered from the sun by canvas, bordered with a Greek key motif, not to mention the interior chandeliers of bronze with alabaster, are heavily influenced by the design of Carillo. It was also Tina's idea to make a dining room table for her home constructed out of ebony and laid with bronze, which she would later accent with art deco side tables of bronze and marble. In an alcove off the living room, Tina asked her designers to create a small library where she could write and study on an antique card table surrounded by her leather-bound volumes on art, religion, and ancient history. Then we come to the master suite, Tina's favorite room in the house, and one she's taken to calling Cleopatra's Barge, which is infused with an Egyptian palette of flax and coal, and features a dramatic bed of hand-forged bronze with hangings of silk and rope that complement the endlessly breathtaking views of the sea. Downstairs, a plush basement spa is adjacent to a screening and trophy room, and with more than eight Grammy wins and countless other awards throughout the course of her career, you already know that room is packed. Finally, every major room in this multi-level villa opens up to a patio or a balcony where Tina can take her pick from a list of activities like dining, sunbathing, or simply lounging around. After all, what else would you want to do while living atop a cliff on the Riviera? That brings our house tour of the homes of Tina Turner to a close. What did you guys think? Which of these palaces fit for a queen would you prefer to live in? It's pretty clear that her home in the Riviera spares no expense, but to be honest with you guys, I've always had a soft spot for Switzerland, so I'd really want a better look at the inside of that place before I make my decision. Be sure to let me know your own thoughts down below, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I love connecting with you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!